Well, hello, my name is Matt McDonald, and this is a brief behind the scenes breakdown of my short film, Not Normal, which I created using Grand Theft Auto V for the PC and the Rockstar editor. Now, I've never made a film like this before, and given recent actions by GTA parent company Take Two, there's a good chance we won't be seeing too many more like it in the future. But I still wanted to give a quick rundown of just what it takes to put something like this together. If you have experience creating machinimas of your own, or you're super familiar with GTA 5 videos, a lot of this might be a bit basic for you. Feel free to offer your own tips, suggestions, and wholesome words of encouragement in the comments below. But if you're at all curious as to how one makes a film using a video game, well then I know just the guy to tell you about it. Me! So to start, we're gonna do some research before writing our script. Oftentimes, the best way to go about making a no-budget film is to write our story around our limitations. And in our case with GTA 5, that means a few things. Just like any film, we need to location scout and figure out what we have access to. For me, the idea was to utilize areas in the game that looked good and haven't already been featured heavily before. We then need to know exactly what the game is capable of doing. And look, I'm not a coder. I don't know how to model or animate or program anything. I'm lucky I don't actually blow up my computer most days. So we're pretty much stuck with what's already in the game. Specifically, we need to know what the characters in our film have the ability to do. Can they run? Can they swim? Can they dance next to a bong? Even though GTA 5 features thousands and thousands of unique animations, props, and vehicles, it's still incredibly limited compared to traditional filmmaking. So we have to be creative with what's available and write our story accordingly. We'll talk about how to locate these things in just a moment. And finally, I chose for the film not to have dialogue. Voiceover, yes. Dialogue scenes, no. Because we're limited to the models and animations already in the game, it's incredibly difficult to create any kind of custom acting. Unlike a live action film where you can show a close up of an actor's face and get a ton of information, a video game, not so much. It takes talented artists and animators months and even years to create these, so I thought it best to write a script that didn't have to rely on a bunch of talky talky scenes. Now that we locked down some knowledge, it's time to write our script and move on. Customizing the game is crucial to creating any kind of unique story, and we do this by installing modifications or mods. These are often scripts or programs that alter the game's data and assets, allowing filmmakers to create things otherwise not possible in the vanilla game. For GTA 5, the bulk of the mods are freely downloadable on a site called, you're never gonna believe this, gta5mods.com. For not normal, I used a f***ing sh ton of mods. Everything from enhanced graphics, to custom vehicles, to unique props, all in an effort to make the film feel as unique as possible. Now, as I mentioned before, there's been some recent controversy surrounding mods in Take Two, along with Rockstar, have seemingly taken a stand on players altering their game. As of now, June 2017, no one's really sure what's going to happen, but needless to say, mods are a critical part of making a film like this. So, I'm just going to assume everything works out great. There are three Three super important mods for any kind of filmmaking within Grand Theft Auto 5. Open Camera and Open 4, Menu, and Scene Director. Open Camera comes packaged as part of the program Open 4, or is it Open IV? You, you know, I don't really know what it's called, but it's awesome because in addition to a number of other handy uses we'll get to in a moment, it comes with Open Camera, which removes the camera boundary limitation in the Rockstar Editor, which we'll also get to a little bit later. So much to look forward to. Menu by the modder Mavens is what's called a trainer, which, according to Wikipedia, is any program made to modify memory of a computer game, thereby modifying its behavior using addresses and values. In other words, cheating. It allows us to cheat. Make your player invincible, change the time of day, teleport to a different part of the map. It's going to make setting up our scenes infinitely easier. It's also a handy tool to search out all those different props and animations and vehicles we talked about earlier. See, I told you we'd get to it. Scene Director by the modder Elswat is another incredibly helpful mod for prepping scenes to film, as it allows us to control multiple characters at a time. We can then record blocking and movements and other animations. And now time for a disclaimer. I don't have to tell you that the whole concept of modifying your game means diving into deep hidden game files and changing things that were never meant to be touched. As you can imagine, this often leads to a lot of bugs and glitches and crashes in a game that's already notorious for being filled with bugs, glitches, and crashes. As stated before, Rockstar and Take Two are seemingly taking a move to squash much of the modding community and are well known for banning players with mods from their online services. So please, please, whatever you do, make sure you know what you're doing before you go tinkering. And if you do install any mods, don't play online. This concludes your disclaimer. One of the amazingly helpful features of Open 4 slash OpenIV is the ability to manipulate textures. 
Textures, if you don't know, are the skin wrapped around 3D models that make them look like actual things instead of just lumpy gray shapes. There are a number of mods you can download that will change these for you, but I ended up creating several of my own for not normal. To do this, we navigate the game folders until we find what we're looking to replace. In this case, we have a beggar sign. I choose one and export it using the export selected option at the bottom of Open4. It gives us the option of a PNG or DDS file. I recommend DDS. Then we take that into Photoshop. We'll need to install the NVIDIA texture tools in order to read it, but good news, it's free. From here, it's pretty straightforward if you know your way around Photoshop. You can see I swapped in a different cardboard background, replaced the text, added some grease stains, and boom, a custom controversial sign. We save that to the same .dds file and replace the old one within Open4. In other situations, you might want to bump up the quality on the texture. For example, in this shot, I wanted the character to have a bit of a messy car and threw in a bag of chips next to the gun. You know, because he gets hungry while killing people. We're in a close-up, but the stock game texture is not much of a looker. Let's fix that. Just like before, we import the original texture into Photoshop, but this time we'll go to Image, Image Size, and bump it up by however much you like. I tend to go more than what I think I'll need so it'll look nice and crisp on camera. We'll say 300%. Be warned though, this will drastically increase the file size and could slow down your game. Once it's at a good size, we swap in some higher resolution artwork, render it out, and replace the old one as before. An important tip for replacing textures is making sure you keep the same exact dimensions and layout as the file you're replacing. So if the original is 256 by 256 pixels, make sure that your scaled up resolution is similar. If you move things around, the skin will not sit right on the model and you'll be left with nightmare fuel. All right, we've got our script, installed some mods, created some sweet custom textures. We are finally ready to shoot. There are plenty of other tutorials on how to set up scenes in GTA for filming, but the basic idea is we'll place our actors, plot out blocking using scene director and other animation tools, and hit record. Repeat as necessary. One thing I do want to call attention to is a great tool within menu called the Object Spooner, which allows us to spawn in just about anything we want from elsewhere in the game. Pedestrians, props, vehicles, whatever the scene calls for. If we want to do any kind of production design, for our sets, this is the route we go. For this section of the car chase, I wanted to add a construction site for the character to drive through, eh, just to make it a little more interesting. You can see in the base game, there's not much here, but with some pipes and dirt mounds and blue collar looking dudes, we've got a neat little set going. The most critical aspect for production, however, is lighting. Just like a live action film, we rely heavily on the cinematography to distinguish this from this. I recommend going into production with a shot list so we can light our scenes accordingly. That way, you know this recorded clip will play for the close up, this one for the wide shot, etc, etc, and we can focus our energy solely on what's going to be in that frame. Of all the different lights you can spawn in, I found there were really three different categories. Street lights, practicals, and f useless lights. FULs are fairly easy to spot. They look like lights. They look like they're turned on. They look like they might even help us, but they don't. They don't actually cast any light on the environment or models around them useless. Maybe you include them in your scene for production design purposes, but I pretty much avoided them for any actual lighting. Practicals are different in that they do cast light and act very much like their real life counterparts. Lamps, wall lights, car headlights, these can all be great if used correctly. Street lights, if you've never been outside, are those big guys along the road. The important difference between practicals and street lights is that street lights can basically be made invisible without affecting brightness, allowing us to place them anywhere in the scene. So for this scene, we spawn in a couple different street lights with the objects spooner and place him to light this very panicked man. But you'll notice something weird. Can you see what it is? Oh, the floating light pole. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably not normal. Ha! See what I did there? We fix this by going into the object spooner and reducing the opacity of the lights to just 1%. If we toggle the light's visibility or set the opacity to 0%, then it shuts off completely. Not helpful. But if we reduce the opacity to just 1%, it's essentially invisible and we can place it anywhere within our scene without having to worry about the camera suddenly seeing an object defying gravity. A couple caveats. Street lights will not work within interior locations. In fact, zero custom interior lighting will work once the clip is in the Rockstar editor. Yes, this is frustrating, and no, no one has yet figured out a way around this. If your story calls for filming in an interior, you'll have to use the existing light already in the game, or build your own interiors using props from the object spooner. Second caveat is that street lights and many of the practicals will not be turned on unless the time of day is set to the nighttime. If you're shooting daytime scenes and finding you want additional lighting, you'll have to get creative. One trick to consider is using car headlights, though be warned, our opacity trick will not work with practicals. As you can see here, as we turn down the opacity, the intensity of the light goes with it, basically making it useless if we try to set it at 1%. If we want to make it brighter, we can make an infinite number of copies of the car, but we'll need to position them carefully so our camera doesn't catch sight of them. I'm not certain, but I don't think gas station management appreciates customers leaving their vehicles floating in the parking lot. 
The Rockstar Editor is GTA 5's built-in cinematic tool, which allows us to take our recorded clips and place virtual cameras, add movement, effects, and other cool stuff. It could be its own excruciatingly long tutorial video, so I'll keep it brief in this one. First, the two easiest ways to make our film look more cinematic are camera movement, and depth of field. Depth of field is super easy. Go into your camera settings and toggle whatever parameters make sense for your shot. I recommend always avoiding the automatic setting, however, especially if your camera is moving. That way you're not constantly rack focusing to whatever passes in front of the lens. For camera movement, things get a little trickier. The Rockstar Editor offers you a choice between linear camera blends and what they dub smooth blends. Linear is super easy and your best bet for the basic point A to point B movements, dollies and tilts and pans and things like that. Smooth blends are for advanced maneuvers tracking shots and cranes and steadicam type work. I'm not going to spend much time on it, but suffice to say, it's a pain in the ass and requires a lot of practice to get right. Ultimately though, it's worth it if you want to make your camera work look professional. For not normal, I made the choice to shoot the film in a way that could be replicated in real life. That meant trying to simulate real motion and avoid any moves that were too precise or video gamey. Except for extremely limited situations, I also avoided the move with and look at options, as they tended to just not look very realistic. The car chase was done by blocking out small sections of action and shooting coverage just like you normally would. We place the camera behind the picture car and set a bunch of smooth blend markers to follow him as he dodges oncoming traffic. We also add some camera shake to simulate the natural sway we'd get while actually filming this from a separate moving vehicle. Once we're happy, we do it again, except this time from the front, giving us a number of options in the edit. Another point to consider for the Rockstar Editor is where we are pointing the camera. Even though we made a shot list, we might discover the angle we originally envisioned won't work for whatever reason, but more than likely it's because the game screwed up and looks bad. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe the animation is jerky or the models are clipping through a wall. Or maybe when we see a guy dragging another guy along the beach, he goes up a slight incline and it looks dumb. No worries though, because we can move our camera as far away as we like thanks to open camera. Judicious framing in combination with some smart editing should allow us to hide most of the glitches and unflattering screw-ups. From here on, it's pretty straightforward. We bring the footage into our non-linear editor of choice and do our thing. I used Adobe Premiere on this one and you can see my sequence laid out. Make sure to spend some time as well on the sound design as opposed to just using in-game audio and music. For Not Normal, the sound was built completely from scratch using none of the in-game audio. Here's a photo from our sound mix where I sat on a comfy couch and Eric did all the hard work. A number of shots in Not Normal also required additional and After Effects, things like screen replacements and beefing up the lens flares. I also used a plugin called Real Smart Motion Blur on a few sequences to add you guessed it, motion blur. This helps smooth out some of the static video gameness of the footage. Once the sound sounds good and our visual effects are all effecty, it's time to color correct, render, upload, and desperately beg people to watch it on social media. We've done it. We've created a cinematic short film using a video game. Good for us. I really want to thank all of those in the GTA community who took the time to help me out or created their own tutorial video. If you found this at all helpful or you have additional questions, feel free to fire away or tell a joke in the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching and don't forget to validate your parking.